This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Right now, it's about uh, six minutes past uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. So in China, that would be about the same time, but only in the morning. <laughs> hey, how are you? What's happening? How's, uh, how's the family, and uh, how's everything going? I'm just sitting here. I decided I was going to run an interview tonight, and then I decided this is a lot of stuff to talk about, okay? And I just I just got to talk about it. Uh, to begin with, uh, what I want to talk about, uh, and this is, you know, it, we, we constantly on this program bring up um, the fact that there is something wrong with our medical system. What's wrong with it is that People do not have equal access to it. You know, your chances of living in a, in a disastrous situation uh, where you get sick and you get really ill, your chances of surviving it are better if you've got money. And, and, and you can just pour money into taking care of your whatever's wrong with you. But if you don't have money... You've got to deal with the systems that already exist. And people go, well, that's okay. You know, you got your Medicare, you got your Medicaid, you got your this, you got your that. But you don't got you anything. Let me tell you a story that happened to me just in the last 24 hours. So I, in my last um, uh, visit to my doctor, my cholesterol was amazingly high in spite of the fact that I'm taking statins. How can that happen? You know, it's unheard of that, you know, you're, it goes up when you're statins, when you're taking the statins. Maybe I'm immune to statins. I don't know. But then I suddenly realized one day when I was counting out my pills, uh, I was counting them out, and I suddenly realized that I had a whole bottle of, of my statin that I hadn't used and I think that there was one month where I forgot to, I put them in this little pill box where I put a different pill for every day into the box. And so every day, there's a whole bunch of pills for me each and every day, right? I think I forgot to put in the statin. And that's why my, my uh, thing went off the charts, because I saw the doctor towards the end of the month, and I probably hadn't been taking them for about a month, and it went crazy. But anyway, so he didn't know what it was. He wanted me to go get another... Uh, another blood test later on and see what what happens and i um i haven't done that yet uh mainly because what the hell you know if i'm going to drop dead i'm going to drop dead anyway what happened was he said well let me put you on this other drug and it's uh what was it called um uh, i can't remember the name of it right now but anyway he said this enhances the statin uh, and will lower your cholesterol by at least 20%. So I'm going, well, okay, I'll take that. And it was, uh, what was, what was the name of the drug? I, I've been saying it for the last 24 hours, and I, now I can't remember it. Anyway, uh, so I, I take uh, the drug, uh, and it, was, it went down, and it was $10. Okay, yeah, it's not bad, $10 copay. Hey, a little extra added uh, zest to my, to my statin. Well, about four months in, all of a sudden, I, they say to me, I'm sorry, we can't give you this unless you get an exception from your, from your insurance company. Uh, and what that is, you go to the insurance company and you say, oh, the doctor says he really needs it. And they go, okay, then we'll let him have it for a copay. All right. So they say, well, your copay is going up to $35. Now it's going from $10 to $35. All right. All right, so I got the thirty-five dollars. So you know what's if it, my blood isn't going to clot or something because of this crap, I'll I'll pay the extra twenty-five dollars a month to get it. Then last night I'm getting ready to order my uh, my pills and stuff from my pharmacy, and I look, and this particular drug all of a sudden is listed at. Two hundred and sixty-five dollars. Now that's for a month's supply, thirty pills. Think about that. It's about it comes out to about eight dollars a pill. All right. 
And I'm going, how does this happen? So I call uh, Oxford, which is my insurance company. And they do a little check and they say, oh, well, you know, um, it, 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 they made a change and now they add an extra charge because you're not getting the, uh, the uh, generic. And I'm going, but the generic is like $75. And that's why I didn't go to the generic before. They said, well, if you go to the generic, you can get it for $75. So I call my uh, pharmacy today, and I say, I can't afford that. Uh, Zetia is the drug I'm thinking of, Zetia. So they said, okay, well, um, um, you know, uh, what do you want? And I, t I told my doctor, send in a prescription for what is the, is the um, uh, I'm looking for it here. Um, that is the uh, uh, generic, and the generic is called, oh boy, I can't even pronounce it. It's like it's from a foreign country. It's like from Africa. Ezetimbi. 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 Something like that. Anyway. And uh, the, she said, well, we can't give it to you for a month because you've already got the Zetia prescription. And I said, well, I don't want the Zetia prescription because it costs too much, so just void the Zetia prescription. So that she voids it. She says, okay, it'll be $55. Well, that's better than 75 okay? So I you go down now, and all my pills together now cost me, you ready for this, almost $200 a month, $195. Now, look. Uh, I'm on a fixed income. I am not wealthy. Uh, I do have some money in the bank, you know, and uh, we do have assets like girlfriend has an apartment and so on that is worth quite a bit now. Uh, so we're not, it's not like we're broke, but on the other hand, uh, I don't want I don't want my I don't know how long I'm going to live, so I don't want my money to all get eaten up. So I'm very careful about all of this, and. Um, to have this drug this uh, go from um, Zetia, to go from $10 copay to $35 copay to, you're ready for this, and this is the copay, $265 because they put a penalty on there or some kind of service fee because you're not getting the generic. All this within a period of two, three months, 10, 35, $265. And now I've got, since I'm taking the generic, I'm down to 55. They said at Oxford it would be uh, 75, but apparently that's Oxford prices. Uh, so anyway, that, that, you know, so what I'm saying is that, and, and this, by the way, is courtesy of an insurance policy. An insurance policy my wife has with her employer. And yet, they don't want to cover certain drugs because they cost too much. Well, suppose that new that drug is a new thing that cures cancer. Oh, well, it costs too much. So if you don't have the money to put a fork out in cash, you know, if I were making a couple million dollars a year, I suppose I just go, yeah, I'll take the Zetia for 265. What does that matter? But for little old Alex, you know, with his is his um, a fixed income uh, 265 is a lot of money it was a, would it be a lot of money if I were still working at Sirius and making the money I made there which was good I still wouldn't be able to pay that 265 so if I can't what happens to all these other people out there you know and then you got this thing in Medicare. I was funny. I was talking to the, the pharmacist, and she said, well, the reason that price may have gone up is you hit the donut hole. I said, I don't hit a donut hole. I don't have Medicare Part D. See, in Medicare Part D, around $2,600 when you, I think it's, you do $2,600 in drugs, okay, uh, all of a sudden there's this donut hole for about $1,500 until you get to like somewhere like around, I don't know, maybe it's $3,600, $3,700. I'd have to look it up. Anyway, it's about $1,100, $1,200. It's a donut hole. Why it's there, I have no idea. It makes no sense. And those people are on Medicare Part D. When they get to that donut hole 
And that's on the cost of what the drug, I think, really costs, not on their copay or their payment of it. Um, the drugs, uh, um, you suddenly hit this donut hole, you have, to, you have to pay full price for everything until you get out of the donut hole and on the other side, and then you don't owe anything. Okay, that's for Medicare Part D, which I don't even have. Okay, just insane. Why are you doing that to people? You know, I mean, especially when it comes to drugs, you know, some of these drugs like this drug I was taking, let's say I really, my heart wasn't in great shape. Let's say my cholesterol was of a stroke making factor. Here, I'm gonna pull my shirt out. I like the way it looks. It, I don't have a bulge anymore, but I, I just want you to, I just like the way it looks on camera. Anyway, see, I'm wearing jeans tonight. How about that, huh? Forgot to take them off. Usually I work in those pajamas or in shorts. Or Why I don't work in my underpants, I have no idea. But anyway, where was I? Oh, let me turn this on, too, because girlfriend might be watching. Okay, there we go. Now we're officially on the air. So I don't, I don't have any idea, you know, what people do who can't afford the drugs, you know. And a drug like this, which aids in my uh, cholesterol and will lower it 20 more percent and is definitely something I should need is $265. I mean, there's a price being put on my life, okay? And I talked to this person at Oxford and I said, this is highway robbery. This is terrible. This is a drug I need for my own health. And the person said to me, because, you know, I never yell anymore at people who answer the phones at these various companies, because I know they have no control over anything. You know, they're not running the company. It's too bad they're not running the company because this guy, for instance, went, well, you know, I, I, do, I do sympathize with you, which I thought was very nice, but it doesn't help very much, you know. So I, I you know, I... It's just a question of forget about me and my little $265. Think about somebody who doesn't have any money at all, who relies on Medicaid or relies on Medicare, and, uh, you know, is then thrown into this nexus where they can't pay for the very drugs which are going to save their lives. Um and I don't know, I, I'm going to have to ask my ex-wife this, uh, Ronnie, because, you know, she had pancreatic cancer, had a big operation, and now she's taking, taking chemo. And I'm sure there are a lot of medicines that she's taking, and I want to find out how she's paying for them. You know, whether she is, is having to pay them, uh, pay for them, uh, uh, pay for them uh, uh, out of her pocket, or whether it's all kind of being taken care of because she's got certain plans or whatever. But man, oh man, you know, if you got if you got cancer like that and then you had to take the pills that you need to take in order to make these, these things work, uh, it, the very thing that's saving your life, somebody is, they're holding your life hostage at a pharmaceutical company. Here's one of the things we had to get back to. Prior to, I believe it was Ronald Reagan, insurance companies were nonprofit companies. They were created as nonprofits. They were not allowed to be for profit. Okay? And then I think Reagan came along and said, well, you know, that's wrong. It's a business and it has to be allowed to flourish and blah, blah. And look at what we got today. Look at what insurance companies are charging because they're for profit. They're looking to make a profit. Let's get them back to being non-profit again. I think that is very, very important. And the other thing is, I think we gotta take the, we gotta do something about the drug companies. We've gotta really lower the boom on these guys. Um, I understand it costs a lot of money to create a drug. But, you know, I'll tell you, in the first year with the kind of, I, there was one drug I saw on television. It said, if you have cancer, taking blah, blah, blah may lengthen your life. And if you look closely at the little writing on the bottom of the screen, it said it would save your life by maybe an average of three to four weeks or something like that. And then I looked the cost of the drug up. 
and it was $10,000 a month. So what are these people doing? They create a drug which can save your life, and then they hold your life for hostage. You can't get that drug unless you pay the money. Now, you may have the insurance, but then your insurance company goes, we don't cover that drug, it's too expensive. And then you say, well, what am I been paying the insurance company money for? You know, it want, it's just amazing what we do to the American public and how we look at people's health and, and care about them. Okay, another thing. Uh, we had a big thing happen out in, uh, out in uh, Las Vegas this week. Uh, and it wasn't another Siegfried and Roy show. Uh, this was uh, that shooting. And uh, a terrible shooting. One guy with an amazing amount of uh, uh, ammunition, an amazing amount of hardware, uh, manages to kill 58 people. I think that's the current amount. Injure about 500. We're all watching this country and western concert. That's what you get for listening to country and western music. Uh, and it's really terrible. I mean, it's just horrible. It's horrible these kind of things even happen. And what's even more interesting is he's not one of these guys they go, oh, you know, he's really wacky. Oh, he, we always knew he was capable of this. Everybody's going, they we're amazed. This isn't the guy you would expect would do something like this. And so that's the, the sum total of the whole thing, right? Okay. Uh, and, and it's a horrible, horrible thing. But, you know you got to ask yourself the question. Okay, here comes a liberal asking that same old tired question. What do we do about this? What, what is it that, you know, how can people get these kinds of weapons? These are weapons that maybe only the military should be allowed to have, all right? And yet this guy had like 44 of them or 49. There were an amazing amount of them, you know. Um, and, and this guy, on the other hand, was also, you could say, well, you know, we, we, we knew all along. We were watching this guy. No, nobody was watching this guy. Never had any kind of police record. He was squeaky clean, this guy. He was a millionaire. He had about two, three million dollars. He had invested in real estate and did very, very well. This guy was not, did not have the profile of the kind of guy who would do this sort of thing. So you ask your, the question, why does he do this kind of thing? Well, one of the reasons he can do this kind of thing is because the kind of weapon he had and that he had the availability of. Now, granted, he might have been able to get access to this kind of weapon, even if they were illegal, but he would have to go to more, bigger extremes in order to get them rather than just walk into a local uh, uh, store in, in Las Vegas or uh, wherever he lived in Nevada and, uh, and buy these things. So that's, you know, it's terrible. And, we'll t and we can talk about that tonight. We really should. Well, here's a little, little thing I wanted you to see, just a little bit of, because it, it, it shows how out of touch our president is Truly, he held a press conference. He went to Puerto Rico today. Oh boy, you know what? How's he going to help? Well, apparently not very much. I want you to listen to a little bit of this press conference. Uh, hold on a second. See there? There they are. There's everybody getting ready for it. And um, uh, there's uh, there's the the uh, uh, commander in chief squatting down. Always, his legs are always Hello, apart. Everybody. He's wide spread. I'm shaking your hand right now. You stay. Yeah, by the way, look at her. She looks like she's dressed for a Puerto Rican vacation. She doesn't look like she's there to see a tragedy in action. Okay, wait till you see Melania. He, he goes back there. He's shaking hands with everybody. You know, it's, yeah, it's probably the first time he's ever shook hands with a Puerto Rican. Uh, he's uh, he's there. Come on. Come on, let's uh, let's get on with the press conference. Thing is, I can only get this whole swatch of it. So, uh, but he's 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 there. He's, he's shaking everybody's hands and uh, you know saying hello. Okay, get back to the podium and start talking, will you? Thank you for your commitment. What commitment? 
There hasn't been any commitment on his part. Okay, get back to the podium. Start talking. This becomes absolutely unconscionable. Okay, there he goes. There now he stays. Steve. Come on, get back, go back and start giving your speech. I wish I I have no way of speeding this ahead. I wish I did. Unfortunately, this is uh, a file I put on to play here. And uh, I did it just before we went on the air. Otherwise, I would have edited it to the part where he starts speaking. Here we go. Everybody sit down. Okay. Look at her. Look at her. She's dressed like she's there for a Puerto Rican vacation. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it was a great trip and a beautiful place. I've been to Puerto Rico many times, as I think most of you have known. And uh, I've always loved it. And your weather is second to none, but every once in a while you get hit. And you really got hit. There's no question about it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to thank, uh, in particular, some of the folks that have come here where really great danger was involved right at the beginning. I, I have to start with Brock. Where's Brock? Brock, Brock Long has been uh, through a lot. We gave him an A-plus in Texas. We thought he could rest for a couple of days. But before he got any rest, he had Florida, right? And you had Louisiana, and you had other places. But And by the way, Louisiana, we don't say it often, but Louisiana got hit very hard also, and they've been fantastic. But then he came to Florida, and that we gave him another A+. Plus, and then all of a sudden, we said, there's another one heading out to Puerto Rico and to the U.S. Virgin Islands. And But it wasn't one, it was two. And I was going to be here a week ago, if you remember. And that was the day of the hurricane. That was the day of the second hurricane. So, uh, Brock has been unbelievable. And this has been the toughest one. This has been a Category 5, which few people have ever even heard of. A Category 5 hitting land, but it hit land, and boy, did it hit land. So, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank Elaine. Elaine, thank you very much. Fantastic acting secretary. Uh, Elaine Duke has been incredible. Tom Bossert's here someplace. Tom, great job. Great job. And to all of my people, and I have to say, General Buchanan got here a few days ago, and a few days no ago. doubt about it, you are a How general. How long ago did there's that happen? you're a general, right? Yeah, that's the reason But uh, he's, he's no games. That's what I said, give me a general. I don't want to have any, I don't want to have a general that plays games. And uh, you've done a fantastic job. The whole team has been amazing. Your governor has been, who I didn't know, I heard very good things about him. He's not even from my party. And he started right at the beginning appreciating what, he, what we did. And uh, he was tremendously supportive. See, anybody, and it's interesting that anybody who, who uh, says nice things level, about Trump is okay in his book. But if they're critical, uh, he doesn't and like them. They're terrible. Violent. They're the worst. And you know, they're governor, losers. I just want to tell you that right from the beginning, this governor did not play politics. He didn't play it at all. He was saying it like it was, and he not was playing us politics the means he and didn't say, "Hey, Trump, why don't you get off your ass and do something?" I also, I also want to thank your congresswoman, who actually represents the largest number of people of any congressperson in the United States. Apparently, it wasn't that. gerrymandered. It's three and a half million people, Jennifer, right? So, Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, who I've uh, watched the other day, and she was saying such nice things about all of the people that have worked so hard. Jennifer, do you think you could say a little bit what you said about us uh, today? And it's not about me, it's about these incredible people from the military to FEMA, the first responders. I mean, I've never seen people working so hard in my life. Perhaps you could say. Thank you, Mr. President. Congresswoman. Thank you, Mr. President. The first thing is that uh, before we were hit by Maria, we were hit by uh, Hurricane Irma. And during that time, before the hurricane, he was FEMA acting together with a lot of employees. More than 4,000 people were here in the island for the different uh, branches of the military. HHS, Navy, Army, uh, FEMA, and all the staff working together before the hurricane hit. They were here before, during, after the first hurricane, and they continue to stay in the island, boots on the ground. Boy, I wish I could. I, I wish I, I could speed I this thing up. Uh, 
uh, I would like to, uh, only because um, um, when we finally get to Trump, he says some things that are just absolutely outlandish. Uh, and I thought it would come along a little faster than this, but uh, this, is the, this is the White House feed, uh, which I can use because uh, that's not a problem. If I had used the CBS feed, all of a sudden Facebook would cut me off and so on. And um, so, anyway. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President, for all you've been doing for the island. Okay. Well, I want to thank you because you were really generous and, and I saw those comments and everybody saw those comments and we really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so important when you have men and women that have worked so hard and so long, and many of them came from two other catastrophic hurricanes. I mean, they came from Texas, they came from Louisiana. Yeah, you already said that already, They came asshole. from Florida. And there was no, how many nights rest have you gotten? Zero in the last month. Listen, right? excuse me, while this is all going on, why don't we all well, jerk off to Melania? Of weeks, and I think we should all I jerk off, all you guys out there. Here. Jerk off to Melania. Special guy, I will tell you. Special. Okay, because she's dressed really rather foxy today. Really. I, I also, uh, in addition to Tom, I also want to thank Linda McMahon, small business. I yeah. always joke. I said she's in charge of small she's business. She's been wrestling with but this small problem. Small business is massive business when you add it all up. And yeah. she has done an incredible job. Built a great company with her husband, Vince McMahon. Yeah. And I wanted her so yeah. badly for this company position. Company based on there's steroid nobody that abuse. Nobody knows how to build a company like yeah. those. Yeah. And let me tell you, like this woman, she has been uh, yeah. amazing. She couldn't get elected, by the way, governor in Connecticut. Do you remember that? We want to thank you, Linda. She tried to much. run and, you know. Hey, Linda, thank you. Let's give uh, Linda a big and round of applause. Mick Mulvaney is All right, get to the, right get to the, get to the, get to the uh, juice of it here, uh, 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 now, Donald. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. There we go. Because we've spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We've saved a lot of lives. If you look at the uh, – every death is a horror. But if you look at a real catastrophe like Katrina – and you look at the tremendous hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that died. And you look at what happened here with really a storm that was just totally overpowering. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. And what is your what is your death count as of this moment? 17? 16 certified. 16 people certified. 16 people versus in the thousands. Uh, you can be very proud of all of your people, all of our people working together. 16 versus literally thousands of people uh you can be very proud everybody around this table and everybody Listen watching to that. can really be very proud of what's taken place uh, yeah in Puerto we're really Rica. proud of the fact i also that. want to pay a very special thanks to the navy uh who's here from the navy who do we have general who do we have what a job so you have ships all over the place i saw them flying in i said boy this looks like very big stuff and the job you've done getting things here there are no docks. There have been. We're yeah, just well, in the anyway, process of anyway, opening I, them up. I, I, just think, I, I, I think we've but had it. there are it. no docks, no nothing. Goodbye, Donald. You got this stuff we'll see you later. We'll out. see you later. That, that, was, that was what he did in, in Puerto Rico today. And it was uh, it, the, the, the part that is amazing is when he literally blamed the people of Puerto Rico for costing the United States money. He says, you people are costing us a lot of money. Like it was their fault that a hurricane hit landfall, okay? I mean, this guy is so out of touch with the world around him. And then to say that just because the death of people, 16 people, is certainly not as bad as what went on with Katrina, Yes, but the devastation of Katrina was not as profound as the devastation of Puerto Rico. What's happened in Puerto Rico is an entire island was without power, without, uh, without the streets were flooded. I mean, it was total and absolute devastation, all right? Yes, there was devastation in Katrina, too, but it was a different kind of devastation. But to compare the amount of deaths in, in, in New Orleans, New Orleans, 
They lost lives because people down there were black and the government didn't give a shit, okay? FEMA was sending them, I remember those housing units that had formaldehyde or something in them and could kill you if you lived in them. Anyway, uh, our president is a fucking goddamn moron. And to, to say, uh, you know, you people have cost us a lot of money. No, the money that you were that was you know the the, the money that uh, it was it was costing you uh, was as a result of uh, of a hurricane, which is not somebody's fault. All right. Anyway, it's time for you to call. I've talked enough. I've been uh, uh, been blabbing along here. And uh, people were watching that, though. They love watching the president. If I'll, I'll run more clips. I have to be careful about the clips I play because if I play a clip, by the way, our lines are open. Did I mention that? Uh, if I play a clip and it's from a network, there's some kind of coding on it or whatever, and then I get a thing on, on Facebook that they're blanking out the program until we stop playing that clip. So I have to go to the White House clip. And I really, I should have done it earlier in the day, and I could just cut out the part I wanted you to see, and, you know, you didn't have to be bored by all of that. But wasn't Melania just dressed for a vacation? Amazing. Just amazing. Oh, here comes Scott Boddicker. We haven't, uh, we haven't seen Scott in a while. Uh, oh, and, and there he is. Look at him. He's all resting in bed. Hi there. How you hey, doing? Alex. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm in. I'm in Iowa right now. What are you doing in Iowa? I don't know. I'm just up here. What the hell? Yeah. There. There we go. I've got. I've got to make myself yeah. smaller here. Hold on a second. I have to. I have to take me oh. and and make me uh, smaller because I'm. 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 I'm cutting out Mike there. Oh, here comes Kevin. Boy, everybody's jumping in. Boy, they must have all loved Some that. Lines uh, are open. Huh? Yeah, they must have all loved that uh, that uh, clip I just played. I love Trump. He's the best. Yeah. Well, that asshole. He's awesome. If I saw him, I would say, you're fired. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pr uh, 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 pretty embarrassing. Pretty embarrassing. You didn't bring up, you didn't bring up the part that uh, when he met the uh, mayor there, he kind of just blew her off. Did he really? Oh, yeah, she's fine. She's that not line. that cute, so that's okay. Well, yeah, well, she can blow him, I guess. Now, now didn't Melania uh, look like she was ready for a vacation? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I thought she, she was, was dressed inappropriately. You no, know. He, he looked like he's ready to play golf. Yeah. But if you know. noticed on that on that thing when she he was shaking everybody's hand going down the line when you were telling him to hurry up and all that. Yeah. He went right up to that mayor, and I've seen this in the clips on you know on the TV today yeah and she was she actually turned around and said you know this isn't political this isn't personal and he just kind of looked off into the distance and said thank you thank you and turned around and left <laughs> he he didn't he didn't say shit to her yeah and he, he never mentioned her in all those thank yous that he did yeah well the, I would play more clips more news clips on this program if I could but they all the ones that come out of the white house I can use okay but if I do ones that the networks get, I can't use them because not because you I can't, can't use them, but if I play them, somehow they're coded in a way or something like that. So that Facebook yeah. triggers them and just says, you can't be playing that. You know, we're cutting the video out on this. These are the very people who let the Russians, you know, fix our election. But no, I'm a problem. You know. Well, yeah. if you if you started a, a Russian language program on GabNet, maybe they'd let the uh, thing go through. Maybe, maybe could very now, well. Now I understand that there's uh, a lot of camera equipment available for cheap you in know, Las you Vegas know, right now. I don't think you're using your microphone. Tap yeah, your microphone. Tap your microphone. Like Tap your All microphone. Right. Let me check. Uh, it will take a minute. Yeah, because it sounds like it's coming out of your camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah, you know, uh, Alex. I saw your clip, which you did years ago on Channel Two News. That was hilarious. I don't even know what you're talking about. 
You're de- you got an inter- you you were being interviewed by somebody I forgot who it was, and uh, geez, you know, my mother's looked at that uh, video of you. Says, look at him, he had a cheesy mustache. I go, Mom, what do you call my mustache? Cheesy. She does not like anybody with mustaches. Well, I don't blame her. You know. Um, so, you know, but I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know which interview. I've d- done a lot of interviews in my time. No, your mic isn't on, Phil. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, you know, you can use your... This is the best film we've had in a long time. It's the best film <laughs> we've ever had. Now, wait, now wait, you're in Iowa, you said, right? Yes, sir. And wh- why are you in Iowa? Which which daughter is in Iowa? Uh, it's my sister. It's your sister. Yeah. And you and you decided uh, you were bored with your sister, so you'd call us tonight, right? I'm bored with my wife. My wife. <laughs> oh, is she there with you? Hell no. Oh, oh, no. That, oh, that's why you went to Iowa. Yes. Peace and quiet. Does your wife know you? Did you tell her before you left, I'm leaving because I'm bored with you? Well, actually, I think now. she was bored with me and she told me to leave, so, yeah. She told you to leave? Well, I was up visiting my daughter in uh, Fayetteville in northern yeah. Uh, Arkansas. Yeah. Was almost to Iowa, about a third of the way to Iowa, so I just yeah. continued on to visit family. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's nice. That's cool. It's. What the hell else do I got to do, right? That's right. That's right. You miss all the football games down in Texas, though. Well, you know, that's that's a good thing. I got to talk to Amy next week or uh, in the next show about Plano beating Denton Geyer, but uh, that's a, that's another story for another show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's for you to do on the Texas hour that we have here. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a Texas yeah, thing. Yeah. The Texas hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is. Oh, now it's right. working. Now it's working. Yeah. yeah. That yeah sounds better. What was your problem? preferences Pre- of uh, course it's I, always I preferences had, uh, disconnected everything on sunday and, w- and went down to monterey uh to the guy that wrote the book on uh lightroom and uh i took my robo my computer i forgot my keyboard so i had to buy another one yesterday mm-hmm. and um uh, so uh he he unscrewed up all my uh my things in lightroom he got uh, got me a uh, system to back up everything, and then when I put it back together, I didn't notice that uh, the setting had changed. Hi, Charlene. How are you? Oh, hi. Yeah, she's uh, she. You got a nice, really nice, clear picture tonight. Really terrific. Yeah. Must be my fire. Well, it seems <laughs> no, it's, it seems as though with Skype lately, all the pictures are really quite high def. You know, they look really good. Mm-hmm. And even when I blow them up on the television set the next day to see how they look, whatever. I was going to mention, didn't the Las Vegas shooter spend $100,000 on camera equipment to to, uh, set up the cameras in the room to videotape or or to video what he was? uh, He had a room service card outside so he could see if the cops were coming to get him. Right, right. I just saw that on CNN. But what's, what's unusual about this guy is... This is maybe the most unusual profile you would expect out of a guy who does something like that. I mean, there was no, there was no Nothing. indication. It's always Nothing. that way. No, it's no, it's not always. always. No, Texas. it's not always that way. Phil, Phil, Phil. How many times do you hear people go, "Oh, yeah, he was a little weird." You know, he was a little most weird. Most of these shooters, you know, the 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 ones that aren't terrorists. Uh, most of these shooters, they you know, they say, "Oh, he was such a quiet guy. We never no, expected quiet this." Quiet guy. This guy wasn't even a quiet guy. This guy was a fa- nice to his family. He made and his a millionaire. Family, or something, he was a millionaire. Right? He helped make the rest of his family a lot of money. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he sent a hundred thousand dollars to his girlfriend in the Philippines, which I think uh, now they're looking for her and they want to yeah. see what's going on with that. Right? Well, well, she. I don't think she had anything to do with. it. To tell you the truth. So, something will come out there there's got to be some well, understory well, there's, there's maybe or, some understory but the thing is that up to a certain point this guy was totally a rational normal guy with a couple of million dollars and uh you know uh, his health seemed to be good and uh 
he enjoyed gambling and he was lost some money, but you know, he could afford to. It's not like he lost all his millions, you know. So Oh, can I clarify something you said about automatic weapons? Yeah. Uh you you can't buy an automatic weapon that wasn't made before nineteen eighty six. Uh, anywhere in the in the U.S. and what he did was he bought weapons that he converted to fully automatic. So yeah, uh, no, I know he, he did he, something he, that was illegal. He, it's not legal yes. to buy a fully he, automatic he, he, weapon. Yeah, but uh, I I I don't see any reason to have a semi-automatic. I mean, uh, I mean, do you have a semi-automatic rifle? A rifle? No. No. Okay. Well, then then you know. Uh, and not even Phil Meyer needs one. You uh, know? That's, no, I don't. But, uh, you know, if... But, well, who needs one? That's um, why he was able to kill so many people and cause so much... I mean, this is the biggest thing in history, the most people injured and all that, because of it being a high-powered... Um, USA yeah. number one. Tom USA Tom number one. Tom need them. Uh, bad guys need them. <laughs> You know, there, there's uh, there's a lot of people that need well, them. Well, th but if you don't make them readily available, they're going to be harder to get. Yes, some people are no, still going to be able to Some it. people can still get them, but at least you don't. Maybe a guy like this would have thought twice if he had to go to too much trouble to get them. Yes, uh, had plenty of them. Jeff. Jeff. I, I think the people who buy these things think that this somehow uh, keeps them uh, protected. And at the same time, it's an egotistical idea, yeah. like, oh, because uh, of the safety issue, I can, I'm safe for my family, I can buy the biggest, craziest gun, yeah. Yeah. shoot the hell out of them. Yeah. You know, uh, but Jeff, that's what, what, about, it's all what about for, your for blue buy it? And of course, you know, one out of 100,000, Becomes to become a knot to go with it. Yeah. yeah. What What about you know during these situations like uh, Katrina, uh, Houston, uh, uh, the Keys, Puerto Rico? Uh, there was looting going on. There were people trapped in their houses. Uh, there were situations where people would go in and try to loot and rob. And if you were in your house trapped because you didn't have a boat to paddle out in, and you were stuck up in your attic. Uh, they might kill you just to take, you know, your your valuables. That's the other reason why, Phil, they have all these guns, because everyone's waiting for Armageddon and the day when they have to defend themselves against people that are looting and pillaging. And yeah. so they, they have stockpiles like this guy, but right? You, you don't know when Armageddon is going to take place. You don't know. Yeah. So uh -huh. these people mm -hmm. uh, who, who believe that they need to defend themselves... Uh, and they have a and they have a right to do it. Uh, exercise that right, you know. Uh, I don't necessarily feel that I need that kind of firepower, uh, but you know, if I was in a in a in a situation where I did, I certainly wouldn't want a slingshot if I had to come up against a guy that had you one. You want a semi-automatic weapon, right? That's uh, it's funny, happen. Phil. I I don't know why is it that I don't feel, and I'm living in what was at least a dangerous neighborhood that I don't feel uh, the need to have a gun. It's very simple. Huh? Nobody's going to climb eight, eight, floor, eight, eight steps, eight floors to get to you. There's an, ele uh, there's an elevator. Uh, yeah, but if things turn to shit, <laughs> the elevator wouldn't be working because there wouldn't be any electricity. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're up on the top of the hill. And, uh, you know what? I like that saying I, that if you have a gun like that, right? Yeah. You better be prepared to use it on an assailant or something like that, because if you chicken out at the last minute, they're going to grab it out of your hands and they're going to oh, kill absolutely. you for that. Absolutely. And there's a lot of people that are in that situation yeah, where they yeah. think they know what they're doing, but they don't. Well, now, this, this guy, yeah. uh, this guy was a nut, but he could have gotten a semi-tractor trailer truck and drove, drove into that crowd just like they did in, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, he could have uh, uh, filled a van with uh, fertilizer like they did in Oklahoma City. There, there was, you know, there's uh, there's all sorts of attacks. If he was, uh, you know, thinking small you time. You know, you're, 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 you're hypothesizing, and you tend to oh, hypothesize way too happened. much. I mean, I was listening to the show the other day, and you were hypothesizing about how you could get, how you could uh, use a CB radio when there's no electricity. 
You know, no. come on. I, I no, come there are on. ways of generating electricity. Uh, you can even crank these things, and uh, and I wasn't talking about CV. I was talking about ham, which uh, could give you a much further uh, distance. Well, ham uh, is the same thing as CB when it comes to the power needed to to use it. Yes, yeah. yes, Mike. How, Phil, for example, you said generate power. One, when we're called out to service for any type of emergency, you have to pack up whatever you need. A car battery, a lot of guys carry car batteries with them, not generators, car batteries. Yeah. They're out there for a couple <coughs> of days, three, four days out there mm -hmm. for their relief from the job what they're doing and you go back to radio operators doing. that set yes. up a communications net yes now you're, you're a ham radio operator yes. do you want to uh, you talk, uh, say something to alex about uh other people that in emergency situations like this that have set up a communications net uh even when there was no electricity the all they have to use is car batteries that's all they use all right a lot and of guys use car batteries and you can recharge card batteries with a generator no, you just sure. uh, be, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, your battery Isn't that will last. Isn't dangerous, for, though? Could it blow up the battery doing that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true, too. The car batteries could do explode. Like a big jump start or something? Yeah, so Interest. did double A's. So do, so do cell phones uh, on the plane, you know. Uh, a lot of things. Oh. You know, Since when is cell phones... No, my. Uh, some people are. think that these cell phones blow up every, you know, like a hundred of them every two minutes are blowing up somewhere, you know. Yeah, from or the lithium I battery. Right? Plane, or you can ride in the airplane and watch the engine fall apart. Oh, yeah. in, you know, that happened mid a couple days ago. Air France. It's not, it's not uh, uh, safe to fly. <laughs> you know. It's not safe to fly. Why in the hell fly for? <clears throat> well, if you had a, if you had a fully apart. automatic weapon. If you oh had an automatic weapon and it we fell off, it would be safer. Uh, I'm you changing the subject a minute. But did, did anyone see Wayne Newton? Like, by any chance, all the celebrities that they asked about, you know, how did they feel about it? Yeah, it looked no. like his face had been blown up with an explosive. I know. I haven't seen yeah. Wayne in a while. And I said, my God, he's really bizarre looking now. Well, that's that's what happens oh. when you get too many facelifts by the worst doctor yeah, in Las Vegas. Yeah, but then he's dying his hair black like Elvis, which he never really had black hair I used like to that. know. I used to know Wayne years ago when I worked in Houston, Texas. He and his brother used to play the Cork Club. Uh, which was Glenn, uh, what was his name? Glenn, who? I'm trying to remember his last name. Who? Glenn Fitzgerald, maybe, was his name, but it was his, the Court Club. Uh, the, it was the guy they based the James Dean character on in uh, Giant. And he had this club called the Court Club. And uh, he, uh, Wayne would play it along with his brother. They were the Newton brothers. And uh, I never saw a better act practically in my life. Great act. Just a great act. Did he get his, uh, a start on the uh, Lucille Ball show? No. No? No, he did it on his own. Really? Yeah. And I think he did more Bob. I think he did Bob Hope. Uh -huh. uh, you know, but... And and I liked I liked Wayne. I especially liked his brother. His brother was really cool. And then he and his brother broke up, and you know, Wayne suddenly became the... Uh, uh, Donkey Shane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he he had that t that really childish voice. It was amazing, mm. but uh, he, um, he was a pretty nice guy at the time. And uh, I hear, heard that if you went to see his show in Vegas, he was a pretty damn good performer. You know, he pulled out all the stops when it came to performing. And then I went and performer. saw him a few years later, after his star had started falling in uh, Vegas. At something like the Palo Alto County Fair or something like San Mateo County Fair, and uh, <laughs> it was he was terrible. He couldn't sing anymore. His voice was shot. I mean, just terrible, just terrible. But yeah. Oh, a Pendulette also had something to say. What do you? I have? thought about he blood today. Yeah, yeah, because he's in Vegas. You know, he's a Vegas act too, right? Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll tell you something that happened that was strange. The networks became skitterish about the whole thing. And oh yeah, we they stopped saying his name, right? The the, oh. the shooter's oh. name? No, yeah. no, no, no. That, that's not it at all. That's not what I, where I was going, Charlene. Sorry. Uh, 
uh, as you know, Penn and Teller have a show called Fool Us, which is a very good show if you've never seen it, in which they bring on magicians who try and fool them. And if they fool them, they right. get a little trophy and they get to appear in a Penn and Teller stage show. Okay? Uh, and that show has been on. It, it's a nice summer replacement. They did 13 episodes of it, more than is usually given. And <laughs> this week they canceled it. Why? It takes place in Las Vegas. Ah, oh, because oh. of the thing. Now, now, how ridiculous is that? You that know, mean, no really dice? Dumb. huh? But they—they they didn't know they didn't cancel showing Dice's show, which is more of a Las Vegas show than the Penn and Teller show. It right. just says yeah. from the Penn and Teller Theater in the Rio in Las is Vegas. Of, do you, you think know. this is going to scare people about Vegas? That you know now it's like going to. You know, financially, they're going to be hurting it's from this. No, nah, no, nah, I don't think it's going to hurt Vegas. A couple of days, that's about it. A couple of days, okay. you know. Yeah. As soon as they patch up the windows at the Mandalay Bay. <laughs> and, you know, and open up. And clear, up oh. clear up all the shoes and uh, they, personal they effects that they were. Yeah, they close the street because it's a crime scene. Yeah. Right. You know, so yeah. nobody can get in. Nobody can turn on. I don't know Vegas if you've seen board. Vegas. I consider all of Vegas a crime scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You Especially know, the strip, yeah. I, I try to. I, I, there's no shows that I want to see. I don't gamble. I don't really drink much uh, to, to speak of. So, you know, uh, Faye said to me, you know, would you want to go to Las Vegas for anything? I said, no, not really. You only want to go to Las Vegas for maximum three days. Yeah. Maximum. Right. Yeah. I used to have to go for a week at a time because I used to go to the trade shows with uh, Play Incorporated. And they used yeah. to take out a booth at the trade show there. And you would have to spend five days there. And spending five days in, in Las Vegas, by day number four, you want to kill yourself. You know? Yeah. Because it's, it's a, it's a, it's a one-note one town. It has it's, no other existence but hmm. to be, you know, what it is, which is a playground uh, for people to gamble. And I don't uh, Bill, have, you, have you ever seen this? Have you seen the shows in uh, Vegas, the um, Cirque du Soleil? No. That is one hell of a show to go watch. I That's went and saw Cirque du Soleil here in New York, and it was the worst show I have ever seen in my <laughs> life. It was in San Francisco, ah. too. It is, was just what? horrid. Girlfriend said, hey, I got us tickets to Cirque du Soleil, so we went to <laughs> see it, and after it was over, we both went, wow, that was a waste of money. Well, the one I saw in Treasure Island, it was, it was uh, like wow. It's like you know, how in the hell these the people. The only can thing do good about it is you get to see a lot of women's crotches. <laughs> you know, and True. that's a, that, that, the the, yes, and right, group. right. Oh, yeah. uh, 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 Scott gave it two thumbs up. I yeah. like crotches. Or two thumbs in, you know, whatever. There you go. Yeah, yeah, um, but. Um, you know, Trump likes scratches. Trump loves, well, he likes he pussy. Him. He, he likes to crazy grab, grab, pu grab pussy. <laughs> he was throwing paper towels to him. He said he said something stupid in Puerto Rico, Eric. Well, we already he, talked about that. Oh, I'm sorry. He said a lot of stupid stuff in Puerto Rico. <laughs> he the, the, said the, 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 be, the best one was him saying, you people are costing us a lot of money. <laughs> well, wait wait a minute. Now. I didn't. I didn't think that a hurricane hitting your house was your fault. I thought it was even yeah, funny. So the, the little photo. You know, if he had said, the hurricane is costing us a lot of money, okay, you people are costing us a lot of money you is a little people. off the He's wall. He's still calling people you people. Yeah, You're, he refers uh, to them. That's not the okay. purpose. What did you say, Phil? He ought to go to your post office and... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you people. Yeah. How about you know, the photo op when he was... Uh, did they have his picture on the wall at your post office in Harlem? No. But he's the president. Don't they always have the president's no, picture? No, I don't really? think no, they don't in post offices. When's the last time you were in a post office? I don't think so. I've been in a post office in years. Well, then that's they probably the have reason why. They wanted posters, but they don't even So have the that only one. one you remember on the wall was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So, you know. <laughs> or maybe they had Ben Franklin back then. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, ben Franklin was never a president. No. Oh, that's right. Sorry. But he started the post office. But That's he but he did have a similarity to Donald Trump in that he liked to grab pussy. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> so how did you, how, how did you uh, 
Languages. How did you like him uh, throwing the paper towels and the cans of yeah. meat? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, he was throwing towels at people. Yeah. Paper towels. It's like he's in costume. Here you go. Uh, he, one of these, this will absorb your whole neighborhood. Here you go, you <laughs> hungry peasants. Take Thanks these. Thanks for the bounty, Trump. <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah. I, I mean, talked to some maniac. Sure, there's another side to it. What? I talked to some Puerto Rican women today. And let me tell you something, they really don't like him at all now. They didn't like him before, but they really don't like him now because of how he treated that woman. Like on SNL, didn't uh, they do an Alec Baldwin where they yeah, called By the way, a, that, SNL, that SNL last Saturday was the worst SNL I've yeah, ever seen in I my agree. life. What? Yeah. what? I didn't just, watch just it. Just terrible. Just not funny. Nothing. Right. It wasn't that fun. Just, you know. Yeah. It's the Trump bashing. Don't you say that, Alex? It's like all uh, Like, enough with the Trump bashing already. Uh, yeah, I, I think you could probably stop bashing Trump. I think, you know, I agree with, uh, to a certain extent, with my, my, my friend uh, uh, Rob Schneider when he said, you know, bashing Trump is like shooting fish in a barrel. Mm. You know, it's too easy. It's yeah. too yeah. easy. And Alec... Alec uh, Alec Baldwin said he was going to stop that a long time ago, and he keeps doing it. Yeah, so they, he won the Emmy. He won an Emmy. He won an Emmy, and they gave that. him a lot of money to do it. BFD. You know, and, but he ceased to be funny with it. It was funny the first time he did. Yeah, it got old. It got old. <laughs> you know, it was yeah, funny the first time tired. Larry David did, uh, did uh, what's his name? Um, yeah, New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders. Oh. Bernie Sanders. But the, then when he did Bernie Sanders several other times, it wasn't as funny. Okay. I think it was funny when he met Bernie Sanders and did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I saw him. his. Uh, <laughs> what, what? What were you saying, Jeff? I saw Larry's uh, new show on TV. Well, it's not a new show. It's uh, the old show, new season, after five years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was pretty crappy. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Good. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. You know. You know, he makes me he makes me laugh just because he's old, bald, and a lot like me. So you know, you are similar to Larry David a little bit. You have that personality, like. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean Tony. it in a good way, though. Uh, oh, you mean it in a good way? I see. Yeah, Tony. Uh, <laughs> I like Larry David. That's a compliment. He was on tonight on that Ancestry show. I forget what that guy's name is that does the ancestry of everyone. And my mother thought it was Bernie Sanders. I thought it was kind of funny because you know how he played Bernie. I said, "No, Ma, that's not Bernie is that, Sanders." Is that the show Larry they started? That's a show I think they started in England called "Who Do You Think You Are." Is that the name of the show? Oh, this I is think, the one. I think you're right, Alex. Oh. What? Oh, the one I mean is the one that that guy. He's like a professor, and it's it's all from Ancestry.com. It's they run their commercials through the whole thing. It's like you know they take a celebrity and then they trace his. You know, family tree and all you that know, stuff. You know, Ancestry.com is the Mormons, don't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. They had to take, they did, they did a, um, uh, 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 oh, we just lost, uh, we just lost Tim. Tim, are you there, Tim? Oh, oh we, oh, we yeah, lost so Jeff. Here. We lost Jeff. Okay. Hey, Tim, how, how are you? Um, I'm worried about Puerto Rico. It's just going to get worse with disease and stuff. And oh. why would you throw paper towels to people that don't have any water? Right, they want they water. Throw, well, no, but no, that's water. to help mop it up. Yeah. Like one those towel are, per those neighborhood. Those souvenirs shoots. to take home. Those yeah, they are souvenirs. Said, uh, they yeah. Said, uh, maybe it's, uh, hey, no, wait a minute. It was first aid kits, actually. Trump That's signed. all they could afford. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. You mentioned the, the post office yeah. and mm -hmm. having the president's... I, I, I ran a social security office for 20 years, and we always had to have the the uh, secretary they or the did, commissioner right, in this case. Yeah. I and president that. up there, but uh, our post office here in our town only has a picture of Pence. Because I talked to the postmaster, he says I don't want to have to bother to change it next January. Is that is that a joke or is that for real? That's a joke. That's joke. a joke. Oh, okay. All right. No, I live in the joke. middle of uh, Ted Nugent country. So there's no, and the, and the NRA is very strong up here. We have a militia about 20 miles from us that has an encampment. You can't enter the encampment. It's guarded with people with guns and you, unless you have a membership yeah. there. Uh, Mike, so had there it, Mike had his hand up. Yes, Mike. It was a sad day in entertainment. Monty Hall died at 90. Right. 
right? Six. Six. That was three days ago, Mike. <laughs> well, it scares me for being alive, pal. Well, no, no, it. there's a there's a there's a cutoff date, you know. Tom Petty. Hey, I got a better one than that. My my yeah. dad was on his show. What your what? My dad was on his show and won some prizes on his show. Who was? My father. Your father. Oh, wow. oh what did he? What yeah, he won stereo and cameras and clothing. Yeah, and what? then he had to pay the taxes on him, right? Just read that on. Yeah, and then. Yeah, on the, that, on the taxes. His, his, his taxes, his tax letter from the state was in the mailbox when he got home from vacation. There, in most of those shows, in most of those shows, they actually had somebody from the IRS backstage. Yeah, and in many cases, you had to sell off some of the stuff you had won in order right, to pay for the stuff want you wanted to I keep. Want to call me. They had to some, sell the car to pay the taxes, right? Some of the th- some of the things you're not allowed to sell on some of the shows. Yeah. Can you trade so, the car for money? You think? Yeah. Well, of course you can. Once you own it, you can sell 30%. it. Thirty percent. I would sell it. Show you. There's a limited a number of dealers that you can get the car from. Uh, I, I was reading an article the other day uh, about uh, people that had won on game shows mm-hmm. and how much difficulty uh, they had in dealing with not just the taxes, but receiving the prize. If they didn't want the prize, they, they ended up basically with nothing. Really? I don't And some of these things, they would have been better off just saying, keep, you know, keep it. I, I, I don't want to win. Remember uh, the odd couple that won the tuna fish? He kept going yeah, for it. Yeah, if you win thirty thousand dollars for the prizes, you know, <laughs> that's a manufactured retail price. Whoever pays that for a product, exactly. So uh, you're basically Jim getting Fox. the you're buying the stuff for the price it would have cost you to begin with on eBay, and all you're doing is playing. Tax. It's just a rip off. Yeah. No, but it's not that it's a rip off. It's just that these people mm-hmm. win these these prizes and they're so happy. I just walked away with thirty six thousand dollars with yeah, the prizes sure. on the Price is Right. Well, they, and then the when trip. they get backstage, there's a guy going, "Hey, you owe us so much money." Or <laughs> they, they, yeah. I think they have you sign something saying you understand yeah. you're going to have to pay taxes on this, and they won't just like release the casinos. It. Yeah, yeah, casinos, yeah. Win, casinos do that. Thing. Casinos. You win do a that. car, you win cash. Not so bad. You win a trip. You got problems. Why? You know, and maybe you can't even take the trip, and you still yeah, got to. There's, there's, re- there's restrictions on the trips, too. Yeah. For so, time periods it, and everything else. The so. game show should be paying the taxes. You're just the best. Well, that's not. I actually, I, I actually wanted to drive on a Ford station wagon. My dad won 10 years earlier on The Price is Right with Bill Collins. What did your father do? Go around paying for the family's uh, life <laughs> with, with game show? No, 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 actually, actually, it has to do with wartime because we we went. To, he went to visit his war buddies, one in New York and one in Walnut Creek, California, which is what. Oh, that's that near San Francisco. Well, that's where and, I live. Uh, when he was out there, he decided to get on the game shows, and he was a grocer, and he was just a very good people person. So they picked him out of the crowd to be on the shows. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, you you can uh, you can only do three of those shows. Oh, that's it. You can right. only do three, right. and there are oh, some people who professionally jokes. have kind of gone on each of those shows and won a lot of money. You know, right? But uh, you can only go on them, I think, three times. Uh, I had a friend that got chosen to be on Ben Stein's Money. He's a real smart guy. Uh, the day of filming, he found out he had cancer, and he just turned into a total nimrod. He, he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't answer anything. He couldn't answer any oh, questions. He still, you know, he kicked the cancer. He had prostate cancer, but it was uh, many years ago, and uh, before, and you know, it sounded to him like it was the end of the world. So. Uh, yeah, he goes down. He's ready. He's he's. They're filming, and he couldn't answer a question to save his life. Yeah. Well, that's not to save his life. That's a bad choice of words. Also, not one of the biggest game shows of all time. Who who was the uh, who was the uh, uh, Ben Stein? Jimmy Kimmel. It, it, yeah, yeah. I didn't even ask the question, and Scott went Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel was the uh, sidekick on that show. Oh, really? Okay. No, huh? So Alex, what did you uh, say? What did you say? What did you I say? Really? Really? Oh, really? I thought you said Billy. Yeah. So everybody wants Jimmy Kimmel and Oprah to run for president now. Right, right. <laughs> uh, another entertainer. You guys will be real happy. Great. She's well, but no, 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 to say that differently, better entertainers. Nah, yeah, one entertainer, you see them I all. Know. I, do you really want Oprah Winfrey as president <laughs> of the United States? Come you on. get a Buick. You get a Buick. You get a Buick. 
A car in every garage. That's, that's, that's what they. Build. That's that's what, what, my car coming. That's what the politicians have said that's for years. Fun. I'll put a, a car in every garage. Yeah. Two, two chickens in every pot. Yeah. Yeah. Did Oprah do that to people that won those cars that they had taxes? Well, they yes, they had to pay right? the taxes on oh, those yeah. cars. Or, they were mad, yeah. In a lot of cases, I would like to know how many actually took the cars knowing they had to pay the taxes on them. Uh, you could probably come out ahead uh, on a brand new car. You know, uh, the wholesale value uh, it would more than cover the taxes, and you come away with a couple of grand. Yeah, but you have to sell it. You can't keep it. No, no, you probably talk to the dealer that's going to deliver it up and say, hey, look, you know, what will you give me for it? Well, the bank yeah, but what I'm saying is you got given a car by Oprah. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. But no, you don't really get a car, and you don't really get a car, and you don't really get a car because you're going to have to pay the taxes on this. And granted, paying the taxes on the car is cheaper than buying the car. Yeah. So you probably have to borrow the money as a car loan in order to pay for the taxes on the car. What happens? Uh, how much they charge you if you win Preparation H? You know, let's say let's say uh, Preparation H is giving away uh, tubes to everybody in the I audience. I think there is a they cut off forty percent of the tube and give it to <laughs> It comes with three tickets to Circle Soleil. You can only shove it. Yeah, you can only you can only shove it forty percent up your ass. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey we're gonna take the video of Trump. Throwing out the paper towel, yeah, you, say, you want a bounty. Which you reminds want a bounty. me, you which, want a bounty. Which, which, here's the death. Here's the death. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, there's an old joke, and you, I'm sure you've heard this one, but it's all dependent on the timing. Okay, so nobody fuck me up by breaking into me while I'm telling this joke. Okay, right? It's all in the timing. So a guy. Uh, goes and he has a really bad hemorrhoid, and uh, he uh, he decides he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get himself a uh, uh, go down and get some preparation H, and it works so well he goes down and gets some more preparation H, and he keeps getting his hemorrhoid so he keeps using the the uh, preparation H. Finally, he goes back and he buys a case of the Preparation H, and the pharmacist says to him, what are you doing, eating this stuff? He says, no, I'm shoving it up my ass. <laughs> but, 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 but the joke isn't... Did, no, did you hear about but, the kid that went to the doctor for birth control? What? And the doctor gave him a box of condoms, so he, he came back um, um, six weeks later, and his wife was pregnant. Oh, really? And he said, mm -hmm. didn't, you do, didn't you use these? I gave you all these... And and the guy says, yeah, I took one a day, and I did have some side effects. Every time I uh, sit, every time I fart, I blow a bubble, and every time I sit, I bag it up. Yeah, I know. There's a, I told the joke wrong because he wasn't using it for his ass. He was using it for something else. And 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 then he, so because it's funnier if you just go, you know, he wasn't using it for the normal okay. reason he used preparation age. And then when the pharmacist says to him. What are you doing? Eating this stuff? He goes, No, I'm shoving it up my ass. That's the joke. Okay. Okay. Go or tell him just delivery on the shoving up your ass that counts. Man, I fucked that joke up. It's the delivery. You did it all right. Oh, we're telling jokes jokes this evening. Yeah, we're, we're, we're somehow telling jokes. We're attempting oh, to tell jokes. i got one if you want to hear it. Well, wait a minute. i got to somehow get you in the screen here. We have a problem here. Jeez, turn down your white balance a little bit, man. You're blinded me. <laughs> that is the color of the screen. You're a You Aryan you. Wow, man. Man. Get some sun, will you? <laughs> what, and get melanoma? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Shut my camera <laughs> yeah, we don't want to see your cock. I'm <laughs> hey, Scott, uh, somebody Scott wrote me the other dick day. Dicks, no. They were worried that you were uh, that something was wrong because they hadn't seen you for a while. Yeah. And oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, so now well, those. I'm here. Yeah. He was just on the road, right? <laughs> How many people do we have here? How come? <laughs> it's, uh, 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 oh wait a minute, we have. Uh, Alex. Full house. Full house, yeah. But why, when we added um, uh, Brian, did I have to widen out the screen? That's what I don't. I don't see Brian at all. I, hmm? I see. I see everybody, and I uh, there's my screen has everybody across. It's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. I got a. I got one for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, what did the uh, what did the Polish defendant say to his lawyer after the judge announced his 400-year prison sentence? I don't know. Thank the fuck Christ, at least I wasn't given life. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I've just, uh, I, I, you have to excuse me, folks, but I've had to adjust the screen so that uh, we could get Brian in there. I don't know why. Usually when we have that many people, I still um, get it well, okay. Let me but right this down. It's huh? too bad there. you can't uh, put more above the, uh, the, the bottom tape. I can't, I, I can only do what Skype will give me. Yeah. You know. The almighty Skype. Yeah. We could take one more person because we could fit one more person would fit in on the bottom. But, you know. You know, Alex, I had uh, seen a crawl, you know, while I was watching the Vegas stuff. Mm -hmm. And it said that um, I think in Hawaii, Trump has golf courses or something, right? They said that uh, somebody had, uh, what do you call it, vandalized them or something, you know, like uh, messed up the greens or something. So I thought maybe Renee would know because she's in Hawaii, right? You know, right next to the Mandalay Bay, the next hotel that you can see a large sign is the Trump Hotel. It says Trump right across the thing. So you look, they're showing pictures of the Mandalay Bay. And yeah. the, you in got Vegas. The right there. Yeah. 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 He could have really made an effect if he'd done it from there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, well, you're right. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like there was a political reason in all of this. No. Yeah. yeah, we don't know. We don't know what this there, guy there's, is. There's I talked to people to today. you got to find whatever it was. I talked to people today, and they still think that it was like they thought maybe it's a terrorist, they thought. No. Uh, Jesus, no. I mean, I didn't think so, but they did. You know, not everything, not, not everything is a terrorist. Yes, you have a theory, Tim? Yes. Yeah, I think it's a possibility uh, that he um, had maybe developed a reaction to some medicine, had maybe a UTI. He had some medical problem that exacerbated his condition because people can go psychotic fairly quickly from certain things if you if you if are very sensitive to certain stuff. So I, this guy planned it. Well, this no, guy I, he, I know, but I'm yeah, talking over a yeah, period but, of a few days. You can still maintain. My mom had a UTI when she was in a nursing home, and she was living like in the early 1950s, and she always had a very clear mind. In which they uh, got the antibiotics a day or so later. She was just fine, but she was completely psychotic. For well, and his day. father, his father was uh, a psychopath too. He was. Yeah, uh, yeah they so found he, that he, he has that in his genes. Trump yeah. he has that in his genes. Trump planned this whole thing just to cover up all the aggravation he's getting over Puerto Rico. That's so, got to be it. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he he bragged that they only had sixteen people die, and a few hours later, they upped the number to thirty-four now. Uh, uh, oh, right. in, uh, in uh, Puerto, Rico. Puerto Rico. How many Puerto Rico. How many died? Would, uh, 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 somebody, would somebody Why look would you up, do that? Uh, uh, Why somebody, is he look, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Would somebody look it up? How many died? Things. How many died in uh, in Katrina? Because he was uh -huh. making it seem like he he said first he said hundreds, then he said thousands. It's over two thousand, Alex. Is it I over it was like eighteen hundred or something? Yeah, but it's high. Around yeah. two thousand ish. I heard. But how you compare? It's a lot, it's how a lot you, larger area, though. Uh, yeah, how you also compare Puerto Rico to what happened to Cat <laughs> Katrina? They're two entirely different kinds of land masses yep. with two different, yep. entirely different kinds of impacts. Um, uh, you know, this was. Yeah, but they can't vote for they can't vote for president in Puerto Rico. So right. Yeah, but they, nobody thought it was a colony. <laughs> you know, if you remember, nobody wanted to leave the Ninth Ward, and then the the dam broke. And all shit broke loose. Right. right. And I went back yeah. to the Ninth Ward 10 years right. after. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the same today? Well, my uh, a friend of mine drove through there about a year and a half ago, and he said it's nothing's changed. Except for uh, the homes except that Brad... that area where Brad Pitt yeah. built a bunch of them. They're weird said, homes, yeah, by the way. Clean houses, and then there's a bunch of shit yeah, everywhere. Yeah, he built these houses, uh, which are very, you know, uh, it was great for him. I mean, he he, he gave people housing, but yeah. these houses are the weirdest houses you've ever seen. It's like he went and got some like uh, architects who were hopped up on goofballs. Yeah, you know? <laughs> pre-manufactured. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Yeah, they, were experimenting. they weren't pre-manufactured. It wasn't like he created these huts. He created these very unique homes. 
But and people, but, and when we were driving past the guy who was driving us, which was a guy a car a driver we hired to take us around, uh, he went. You know, he was pointing out. He says, "You know, that's a pit home, and that's a pit home, and that's a pit home." And there were about there were about ten of them or something on this one street. Yeah, yeah. He tried to spark it. He tried to spark everybody else to do something. Nobody yeah, apparently okay. did. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of these uh, homes that were built uh, where they had formaldehyde in the uh, in the materials. These trailers. Well, that, that was were, FEMA. Uh, Those were the FEMA trailers. Those were temporary, yeah. temporary spots. What was it a thousand trailers? Or yeah, well, they couldn't use them. <clears throat> couldn't use yeah, them. Uh, yeah. I, I the last time I was in New Orleans was prior to Katrina. You know, something. It's the first time you pronounce something right on this show. <laughs> New Orleans. Yeah. New Orleans. And, New Orleans. Uh, uh, I did go to the Ninth Ward because I was looking at, you know, there's a lot of antique stores there and so forth. But if you look, there was all these beautiful old Victorians, and uh, it was it was a pretty neat place. Oh, it's a very, it's a beautiful town. It's yeah. an incredible yeah. town. I haven't been there since, but uh, since the uh, hurricane. Yeah, no, we were there after the hurricane. We decided to go down there because, you know, let's, let's give them some money, you know, make sure they get, uh, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. I used to go there quite often because a lot of uh, shows, like uh, business shows, yeah, were, I, were there all the time, uh, particularly during the winter. Well, you go there, you nice go, and warm. And, go there for the food. Oh, oh yeah. Best my my company place. would book the show, it booked it there, but in August. It was so hot. Yeah. Just getting from the hotel to the convention area, yeah, there was a shopping center you could walk through, but you still had to go outside for a few hundred feet. It was miserable. I had never been in something so hot in my life. Oh yeah, I oh, lived. I, I, uh, 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 Scott yeah. will appreciate this. I lived in Houston for two years, and that was the hottest, most humid place I've ever lived in my life. As I as I so nicely said to. Anybody would ask. I couldn't keep a crease in my pants for two years. You know. You got to start wearing polyester. The humidity you... was just unrelenting. <laughs> and that was the first time I ever had a car with air conditioning in it because you couldn't have a car without air conditioning in Houston. Yeah. And in those days, it was those little add-ons they put into the car, you know. Under the dashboard, yeah. Yeah, after the, uh, after yeah. the, the whole thing. And, but uh, it kept the car cool, you know. That's all that mattered. Well, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. I'll, I'll see you later. No. Um, well, what else has been happening? The, you know the, what the, happened? Somebody won the hypocrisy award of the of the year today. Well, who is that? Tim Murphy. Well, who's Tim Murphy? He sent a, he sent a, he's a congressman. He yeah. sent a text to his mistress asking her to look into getting an abortion on the same day you voted for the new bor abortion restrictions. Oh wow! Oh, well, that's. Uh, and she, and she, she was so mad. She, she uh, sent out copies of the uh, text. Yeah, I think he's from my neck of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, that's that's interesting. Anyway, um, um, you know, it was it it's just uh, uh it, it it's just getting to be it's just getting to be scary. I think you know I I'm just beginning to think that we have. Somebody said today, we really don't have a president, and we're all on our own. You know? So that's why you need a gun. <laughs> You're going to need more than a gun, Phil, because Trump is already, uh, the staff in the White House say Trump's going to decertify Iran. If we do that, Iran's going to start building their nuclear weapons again. So oh, God. We have multiple hemispheres of nuclear weapons in the hands of wild, crazy guys. Yeah. yeah. No three, you got to count Trump. Three hemispheres. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, anybody see any good TV shows lately out of the new batch? I'm only watching my trifecta Sunday night. What's that? Uh, the Ray Donovan episodes and Dice. Yeah. The there isn't much. There isn't much on. What do you mean there isn't much on? There's Star Trek Discovery. Oh, there's, oh Alex. That shit. There's, uh, I forgot the deuce. I like the deuce. There's the deuce. I think uh, the deuce is going nowhere. It's just, yeah, you I'm know. I'm waiting for it to go. I have a hard time there. staying awake during the deuce. I yeah. don't like that twin thing they did with, uh, what's his name again? The yeah. actor. Uh, yeah, they should kill the t other twin off, and I think they will, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not. Will and Grace came back. 
stuff. What came back? Oh yeah, Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Yes, I I watched mm. that just for the hell of it because I heard that it was a half hour of Trump bashing, and that's exactly what it was. Absolutely. And I I found it dull and terrible, and I never watched it in the first place, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm even tired of watching difficult people. Touche. You know? Yeah. Uh, I liked it for a while, but it, it got old. I didn't ever watch. How about watch Designated it. Survivor? No, I, I like that. I like Designated it's Survivor. It's good. It's good. I, the good. He was pretty good on this new episode too. No, yeah. I think it it is a surprisingly good program, uh, and um, uh, it it. It's kind of, I think the reason it's popular is he's the president we all wish we had. Right, you right. Know? And he's handling uh, everything. Did that Nick Dolte one come back? Where yeah, he that's, played back. A, that's back. That's hmm? back. Yeah, that's back. Back? Yeah. Uh, um, where he plays the ex-president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that show. I thought it was very good. Alan? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think you ever have, but what do you, what, did you ever interview Tom Petty? No. Yeah, he passed away. Right You're late on that one too. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just wondering if you ever knew the guy or whatnot out there. No, anything. I never knew Tom Petty, and I was not a big favorite. He was not. A, I was not crazy about Tom Petty. I never liked him that much. Yeah. Oh, I love his music. You know, I thought in some ways. And he, I don't like much music. I mean, especially but with good. the Wilburys. The Wilburys. You know, the Wilburys were wonderful. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't look for uh, Jethro Tull or any of those things, uh, Steve Winwood. I was coming back from Monterey Sunday, and I'm playing Pandora over my stereo. And uh, the the it was Steve Winwood. It was uh, all all of these Jethro Tull. I, I didn't realize what I was missing as a kid. I, you know, I, I just I guess maybe my musical tastes weren't mature enough to to really understand how great these guys were. Oh yeah. I saw a Tom Petty documentary before he had passed away, mm -hmm. and I was amazed that I didn't know, like, uh, he wrote songs that people sang that were good, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just was never a big fan of Tom Petty's, I, I, uh, but I agree with you. I love the Traveling Wilburys. But then again, you, you know, you got Roy Orbison, you had Bob Dylan, you had, uh, uh, who else was George you? Harrison. And George Harrison. George Harrison. I mean, it was... And Jeff Lynn. Uh, huh? And Jeff Lynn, I think, from... No, Jeff Lynn, I don't think was that. No, just four of them. Sure, I think yeah, he was. was no. Five. There, there, was else, five. Yeah. Oh, there was a fifth. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Frank Sinatra, okay? No. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, of the new shows, it's funny. Uh, I've gotten to warm up to two, two of them. Uh, the uh, Orville which was a not a very I good. Love it. I love. I've no. I've gotten to like it. I didn't. I hated it in the beginning, but it it really is pretty damn good. You know, it it's it, the third episode. It finally came into its own, and you're getting that balance of comedy versus. Uh, what is that? Someone's doing their laundry or something. What, what is that? The toilet. Joe. We just got. Oh, a flush. A royal yeah. flush. Oh, yeah, well, but uh, but uh, uh, Jack, are you there? Uh, Jack Bishop. Yes, you? Oh, Yeah, you got to turn on your camera. That's why I didn't know if you were yeah. there or not. Hey, uh, I heard you talking about. TV turn on shows. your camera. I'm turning it on now. Okay. <laughs> I'm swirling. And everybody noticed the 24 oh, 7 feed on GabNet has moved. It's moving closer to the right. <laughs> Please. You Jeff, Lee, you're right, gas. Tony. Now Take it's in the, the center. Gas, Phil. Yeah. Right now it's in the center. What were you going to say? Uh, hey, what was I going to say? Yeah. Uh, I, I've watched three episodes of the new Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. And it is the best Star Trek. I ever. would agree with you 100%. I didn't it like it when I first saw it. I then warmed up to it after I saw the second episode because I realized this is not where the series is going. This is it not what the spinning. series is about. The first two episodes simply sets up the series. The series mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. begins with episode three, in which she gets she gets on the discovery, and it is number one. It's a gorgeous show, cost them a fortune. Yes, yes. The uh, the uh, special effects, the uh, 
makeup yeah, of the but, aliens. But, but as are. much as with special effects, as George Lucas once said, you can have all the special effects you want. If you don't have a story, you don't have a picture. And uh, he failed to remember that when he started doing the last three. But anyway, yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the, this <clears throat> show has a storyline that is really quite exquisite and much better than almost any other Star Trek because the captain is not the star of the show. Exactly. The star of the show is a, is a, 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 a human woman who is raised by Vulcans and trained in the Vulcan culture and then becomes a mutineer and is on her way to a prison uh, thing. For life. For life. For, for life. And is picked up by this, uh, this uh, uh, sp uh, starship called the Discovery, and the captain wants her to become part of the crew and is willing. He says, in order to fight the Klingons, I'm allowed to do anything, and I can give you, like, dispensation or whatever. So the whole plot line is different. You know, and it comes from a different direction, and I think that's you know it's terrific. Have, have you seen I've it? Watched. Have you seen it, Scott? Scott, I think Scott's asleep now. Mm -hmm. No, don't Scott. wake him up. Uh, Scott, him can up. you hear us? Can you hear us, Scott? Scotty, <laughs> beam us up. The, have you, oh, I, 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 I muted you when I, I, I wasn't listening to you guys because oh, I didn't. Muted. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, did, oh, did, did, go back. Did, really piss Bennett off. Go back to listening to Stern like you were doing. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I got one question. Yeah. Does Jack Bishop have the biggest head you've ever seen? Gigantic. <laughs> oh, Gigantic. Huge or is he too close to his camera? I don't know what. What yeah. show was that? They called him the, the guy, the big giant head. That was. Uh... <laughs> but anyway, Scott, have you seen Discovery? Uh, I saw the first show when it was on after the, yeah. the like. Oh, the, so you haven't the, seen it as it develops. Seat, you know, when it was on yeah. regular TV, but I, have, I haven't seen the rest, no. Yeah, it, it's developing very, very yeah. nicely. Yeah. 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 And the and Orville, and the Orville I've, I've warmed up to the Orville. I, I'm amazed that yeah. the Orville it's turned out to be okay, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the Orville. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's has, funny. Has, it, has anybody watched uh, Inhumans? Yes, and it was maybe the worst two hours in the history of television. Oh, I thought you were talking about Sarah Sanders. N no. no. <laughs> the Inhumans is, in fact, you ready for this? Rotten Tomatoes gave it. It's been it's been canceled. Yeah. Has it been canceled already? For the next yeah. season. Yeah, this is the only one. Okay, season. I won't watch well, it. Well, what happened was they shoot they shoot the show in IMAX. Believe it or not. And they spent a lot of money on this thing, and it came out Rotten Tomatoes, which averages out all the reviews, gave it a 4%. Mm. Now, I have never seen Rotten Tomatoes give anything 4%. 4% who liked it. You know. Uh, what, 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 how did you feel about it, Jack? You liked it, right? No, I didn't. I thought it was god-awful and hard to comprehend and um, um, unless you're a 16 year old boy that has read all of the Marvel comic books I mm. just didn't get to it at all now uh, but a funny thing uh, uh, happened tonight if anybody uh, gets uh, uh, Dr. Lewis Gates uh, ancestry show tonight that's they had, the guy right right mm -hmm. they had uh, Bernie Sanders Mm -hmm. For Brian, and they also had Larry David, mm -hmm. and it turns out they are distant cousins. Yes. Oh yeah, right? I forgot that I had heard that. <laughs> no way. Right. Yeah. Wait. And of course, being a big Larry David fan, I had to watch Return of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, was it <clears throat> Sunday night? Sunday. Sunday night. Still. Unbelievably funny, in my opinion. Did they throw him to the curb again? <laughs> <laughs> I Kinda. think they do in one of the t one of the trailers. They throw him to the curb mm. off the well, bus. <laughs> well, well, you know they take out every sacred cow they can find, put them to the milking machine, and you get half and half by the time the show is over. And and uh, I was on the floor chewing the carpet. 
It was so funny. To me, at least. Has any, anybody seen Tina Fey on, was it Great News, that new show? Yeah, I don't watch it. No. Uh, I don't think she She does. was pretty funny. She's yeah. the boss now. It's kind of like a Mary Tyler Moore on steroids. Uh-huh. You know, every time I see Tina Fey, she always looks like she's just playing the same character. Like, she doesn't seem, she always she looks is. the same. It never changes. Yeah, it's just. It's I just saw her in some movie where she was playing somebody that uh, uh, interviewed people for Princeton uh, uh, admissions. It was a cute movie. Yeah, that was a bomb, wasn't it? I just don't think she's funny. And I don't remember the name. But it was, I think I saw it on Netflix. Well, you know, her. Hey, Alex, I watched the Jerry biggest, Seinfeld thing. It was good. You were right. Yeah, the Jerry Seinfeld uh, stand up thing. Yeah. yeah, it's excellent. It's excellent. It's all his old material. Yeah, I like to show the whole. It's movie. like the yeah, history, really the history of Jerry Seinfeld through his comedy routines. Yeah, it was really you. Right, you hit that on. He was really good. I, yeah. I loved Jerry. It was, right? it was. It was. It was. It was good. But uh, uh, so I, I'm, you know, I'm watching that. I found I've, I've had a certain uh, what can I call it? A guilty pleasure a show called The Last Man on Earth. Yeah, uh, I, and this week it was very funny, very funny. I, I've been watching that too, Alex. I, it's it's really, it just it take it takes a, a, a whack at a lot of different things. Yeah, and, uh, Armageddon shows. And on yeah. the first Man, episode of every season, they kill off a famous actor immediately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last but, year, it just, was, last year it was John Hamm. He lasted for right. about five seconds, He's, and this year it was Jack Black. Oh, I would like right. to see Jack. And, and they killed him off. Uh, you just watch it because of Steam Virgin. Tell the truth. No, I watch it because it's just I, I it, it it's it sometimes it's very funny, sometimes it's kind of dull. You know. Yeah. Is, right. Is she, is she uh still married to uh what's that guy's Ted Dancing? Yeah. It's still I like it. uh, he's uh, a new show Ted. Yeah, but not what what show was he on that he I said? I forgot my mother was watching. She wanted me to table five. What the yeah. name of it? Oh, he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm this week. Saying uh, that he was getting divorced. Suggesting that they were splitting up. Yeah, but I don't think they are. Not that I've heard of. I, I thought they were, but I don't know. Oh, uh, well, who knows? Anyway. I'll ask Amy. She knows all that kind of stuff. Did, did yeah. Mike Douglas ever get back with Zeta Jones? We don't know. No, they've been together for the longest time. They're still yeah, together. Well, but they were separated for a while because she was pretty cool. Yeah, you don't leave, leave a guy who's got cancer. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe you. Oh, and you would, I can't get over it. Isn't she like out. bipolar or something, though, Catherine just Zeta Jones? Yeah, she is. She has a big problem. Uh, oh, and she gets, she's a depressed or has um, bipolar. Bipolar, that means you go both north and south, right? Mm-hmm. 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 East and west. <laughs> Eat greater. <laughs> you know, I remember side that. Your ass side, your remember polar that side is your whole side. Remember that feud show that was on about <clears throat> Betty Davis and. Uh, yeah. John Crawford. Yeah. Uh, they had, uh, we just talked about her, uh, played uh, Olivia de Havilland, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah. And Olivia de Havilland sued the people that developed that show and stuff because she said it was the wrong portrayal of her. And I agreed. I didn't think she was good as Olivia. She's Zeta. still alive, you know. And how, yeah, how, how, old. how old do you yeah, think she is? I think she's over like, 100. Yeah, like something like 100. Now, her, or, she, uh, her sister died a few years ago. And yeah. they didn't like each other that who, much. Yeah, who was her? Who was her sister? Oh, I can't remember who. Which what her name was. It's sister was Joan that. Fontaine. That's it, Fontaine. And they wow. never, they didn't talk to each other till the end of her life. They, oh, they, insane. yeah, yeah. So, they were and, and and by the way, as we're discussing this, almost nobody who's listening to this show under the age of sixty knows who the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I heard Joan Crawford's name on there. On yeah. Yeah, well, Joan Crawford. Yeah, that's an old night gallery. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Well, who, dir- who directed? Who directed that episode of Night Gallery? Uh, Steven Spielberg. That's correct. It's the first thing he ever. Gee, he's a little smarty, isn't he? First thing he well, ever directed. I, like zero in on when I see something I like. I didn't he do you know, that truck? That truck movie. Study the duel. shit out of it. Yeah, Duel. That's how I am. That's how I always... Duel, right, that, right. that was, that was his duel. first made-for-TV movie. That was the first movie he did. Uh, mm-hmm. But the first thing that his credit ever appeared on was that Joan Crawford thing. Mm-hmm. Now, if you yeah, really and she to... didn't like him at first. And then at late, it, she, grew to, she grew to admire him, and you know, it went both ways. And she would even, from what I understand, she would write uh, you know, congratulatory letters and you know, when he did movies like Jaws and got... Oh, 
awarded for yeah. it, she would send him uh, congratulatory letters. And well, she was just old and wanted to work, so she would take stuff. By the way, there is even a, if she didn't like. There's an right HBO the documentary called Spielberg this weekend. Oh uh, really? It, it, they, mm-hmm. they, it's a, like a, uh, I guess a two-hour documentary on I've the life of Steven that, Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. Was it it's good? Pretty good, huh? Maybe was it was good? good. How could I see it if it's only coming out this weekend? Oh, I thought, oh, I thought you said the same thing that you saw it, Alex. Yeah. <clears throat> if you really want to feel old, you can have happen to you what happened to me today. What? My 29-year-old granddaughter asked me, "Who's Tom Petty?" Uh, right. <laughs> oh. And 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 slowly I turned. <laughs> no, he's a race car right. driver, isn't he? Oh, yeah. No, he's yeah, a yeah, second yeah. cousin to Petty Cash. <laughs> well, Petty, now Petty Cash was the daughter was the daughter of Johnny Cash. We all know that. I was talking to a young guy in the mall, the shoe salesman guy, mm-hmm. and everything I mentioned, I, I felt so old. He didn't know anything. I, I made rep- <laughs> I said, "Do you know who Steve Martin is?" No, I never heard of him. Well, you see, you know, this is, is, no, t- I never heard I'll, of that. I'll tell, tell you, I'll tell you why that bothers me, because as a kid. I always was interested in things that happened before I was born. Me too, Alex. I Actors, like actresses, too. movies, whatever that happened before I was born. This generation isn't like that. I think. Uh, I don't that's think why a girlfriend that I had that was very young in San Francisco for years and years and years, I liked so much because she grew up in a family where she had older brothers who were much older than her. And so they always, had, and her, her point of reference was stuff where I could say something and she'd go, oh, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. You know. So I didn't feel yeah. guilty about making, having sex with a young girl. So. <laughs> I was yeah, don't let Renee like hear you say that. She'll go on a moralizing motor mouth bullshit trip. Well, well, uh, listen, every man who's ever dated a younger woman and vice has, versa, can has do had too, that come in his way. I mean, look at uh, Sharon. Uh, before I married Donna and after my first wife had passed away, I dated a girl who was 25 years younger than that, me. That's how much younger this wow. woman, this one was than uh, me. And, 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 it and was like one, your daughter. <laughs> and at one point, I, I said to her, should we talk about my career and your Barbie dolls? <laughs> And uh, uh, finally, I just had to, you know, well, kick her to the curb because I said, you know, I, you know, we don't have anything in common. We don't. <laughs> there's nothing we can relate to. Well, it was funny. We, we did, but the thing was that uh, uh, she was 25 years younger than I was. And the other night, uh-huh. wrote a note to me saying, "Don't you have any young people on your program? Don't you have any women?" Uh-huh. And, and I, I had to just go crazy because. She's at least, I think, 52 now. Oh, you know. Is that her? So, what, what's she doing? Where are the young people? Who, are, are you a teenager still? What? You know. Was that her? Yeah, that was her. Oh, okay. Was I was she? wondering why you went off that night. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, I just, it, it bothered me because it was ages to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, she called me on a night when we didn't have any women, but some nights we have Charlene, we have uh, we have like maybe three women on here. So she called you know, in right up there, yeah. You know, uh, and old guys. Uh, uh, hey. Well, tonight, uh, well, Brian, how old are you? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. You know, Tony, how old are you? I just turned forty-eight. I'm getting up there. Yeah, you're getting uh, up there, but you're not an old <laughs> guy, uh, Charlene. No, how, how, Charlene, how old are you? You're not that old, are you? You never ask a woman. Right, I was going to say that. Oh bullshit! <laughs> uh, how old are you, Charlene? Uh, well, I'm not going to be social yet, but I'm getting close to it. You know, oh like really? <laughs> really? Well, you look a lot younger than that, and of course, we all know that Scott. They always tell me Scott's that. in his thirties. We know that. Is he? Yeah. Scott looks young. He don't look that old. His underwear is in its thirty. <laughs> and Phil, Phil isn't that old, I think. But he, no offense, Phil, you look a little older than you really. He's the rug business. But anyway, so I mean, she writes me that, and I'm thinking, she's fifty-two for crying out loud. Fuck me, you know. Well, yeah. What do you mean? We're she's old. young at heart, Alex. She's young at heart. She's young at heart. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I was at a meeting a couple of nights ago. Mm-hmm. And I was there with a buddy of mine, a guy that uh, I've known for over 40 years. Yeah. 
and there was this really attractive woman there. And I said to him, boy, you know, that girl is an absolute knockout. And he said to me, and yeah, Bishop, I bet she's not over 50. <laughs> and I turned to him and said, did you ever think we'd be so old that after you said that, we'd be wondering, are we too old for her? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you know, I have the feeling, okay, and I admit my age, 70, oh, 70, that 77, uh, that uh, I'm invisible to a yeah. whole population out yeah. there. I mean, when I'm on a subway, I don't think there's any woman that's looking at me. Certainly you know, I don't workers, exist. No. You know, they even bump into me because they don't know I'm there. You know, Alex, mm-hmm. as a woman. you got to wear some bling, Alex. got to wear the bling. No. I, I've hit that age. Well, I've hit that age, too, where, like, when I get stopped by the cops, it's like they're not nice to me, you know? <laughs> they're screaming at me like, you old woman, don't you know you didn't make that turn the right way? And you know, they're younger than me, and they're, like, treating me like, you know, I'm some old hag. Yeah, you, you, hate get, you hate getting traffic tickets from a guy whose voice is cracking. You know? Yeah, I had a good exactly. like that. <laughs> and I don't I'm like to tell you I'm fine. I think that he is wrong, but he's the cop. Well, my feeling is if I just uh, made a traffic infringement and you've stopped me and you are 27 years old, don't give me a fucking lecture. Just give me the fucking ticket, you know? Uh, do you know what you did back there? Yes, I went through a stoplight. Uh, give me the fucking ticket, okay? Don't give me a lecture. Twenty questions here. That's that's what I should say, and then I'd really get it. Je- oh, Jeff, do you get? Do you, do you, do you, do you, if they gave a lecture, they didn't give a ticket. I mean, the only time I'm not yeah. invisible is when I'm driving. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff, do you ever get stopped by the cops? Have you ever gotten tickets recently? No. Yeah. I keep away from oh, you know what happened to me? Do you still drive? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. But I try to stay out of trouble. Oh, okay. I don't, but I don't drive anymore that much. I'm af- I'm wondering if I can still drive. You know, it's been so long since I drove. Although I, I drove, kind of I drove split like two driving years ago. between myself and my wife. And we go far. Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 I did drive up to Vermont a couple of years ago, so I guess I can still drive. But. <laughs> Alex, yeah. I was telling Chuck. Is your license still good? What? My, my, my license is still good. Yes, what were you saying? Hey, Alex, what, wait, 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 wait a minute. For, uh, Tony was our, saying uh, something and then Jeff. Tony? I was, I was telling Chuck that I might take a, I might refre- take like driving courses again because I have my license just to get maybe just to drive around the area, like, you know, to work and back. Well, why don't you just get in the fucking car? If you know how to drive, you know how to drive. Well, I haven't driven in a while, so I figured maybe I would well, that, that's, uh, Jeff, what do you have to say about that? You had your hand. Oh, yeah. So uh, we have a, uh, there was a party over the weekend, and it, and it was my uh, daughter-in-law and her family. Yeah. And it was there because her grandmother was 99. Jeez. At, and she still drives. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. My uh, she father is, had a, 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 I'm a, telling you, she is, I, I would let her drive. She's together. She really is. Hey, uh, Jeff, ask her if she'd like to have an affair with a 72-year-old man because then I could be a boy <laughs> toy. But, but you guys need to come down here where you have no choice, no option but to drive most places. That's true. Because we don't we, we don't have a lot of mass transit here. Um, yeah. Uh, so you can't have to the And I thought I was getting old about driving here uh, about six months ago, when I, and you know I was nervous on the freeway. And what I found out a couple of weeks ago, it seemed to me that everybody in the next lanes were right on top of me. And I found out because we've been doing some freeway widening here to put in some toll lanes on the regular freeways, they have narrowed the lanes by a foot. And a foot difference really can can impact your feeling of safety. Yes, yes. Especially if it's up your ass. Yes, exactly. (laughs) No, no, no. No, yeah. I have hemorrhoids. I know yes. that. Right Brian now. has his hand up. Experience, Phil. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> what were you going to say? 
I was going to say, um, my father waited on when he worked at a, a mechanics facility, a popular chain. He uh, waited. He uh, waited on a customer who applied for a credit card, who was uh, starting his uh, yearly trip to Georgia to meet a friend for some uh, peaches and some fruit and whatnot. The guy was 106 years old. Jesus. Uh, the card, the lady who uh, processes the credit cards for the store, it was a store card, I think, wanted to speak to him. She was that, I mean, she she had the same reaction that you guys did. It was, yeah. he just talked to her like, you know, casual. Now, this Alex, is what I needed old, for her. This is what I'm doing. And How old was your mother when she passed away? Because she uh, was over she 100. She was over 100. She had just gone, she had gone about 100 and a half. You know, and yeah. So she made it that far. I think yeah, she decided Alex she was gonna she was gonna go you know lo loneliness the long distance runner get over the finish line and then drop dead you know. <laughs> you know Alex. And, and it was okay because she was taking up parking spaces. So you know. You know I like to hear the stories about your mother and stuff because uh, I have my mother she's eighty six. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I went through a thing already with my aunt in the old age home. You were calling it the snake pit. My aunt was in a snake pit. There wasn't it was a snake pit. Uh, uh, I talked about the first. But then she got out of the snake pit. Yeah, pit, yeah the, the, there's the one home we put her in. I mean, Jewish, they, the it, Jewish home. They were trying their best, but they didn't have the, the, the enough people to take care of the people they had. Mm -hmm. And then I finally got her in the old folks' home, the, uh, the Jewish home for the aged, which is mm -hmm. very famous in San Francisco. And there's literally one person for every person there. Mm -hmm. To, to you got me thinking uh, I should look for a Jewish home or something, you know, if I ever need one. I'm looking you know? for one for me, for crying out loud. <laughs> you know. No, but I mean, there were, you know, I mean, the thing is, the thing I was impressed by, uh, or, or at least made, uh, became very apparent to me, was that uh, if you're uh, old and, uh, you know, when you go to a place like that and there's a room full of old people who are all in their say 80s and 90s all right and they're all kind of they've got dementia or whatever that's the reason they wind up in the home is because they they can't live on their own any longer and my mother didn't go there till she was 97 so you know mm -hmm. uh but you go into this room and it's nothing but women oh, nothing yeah, not that but that women men. there they was one there was one guy he played the piano one guy. Miserable. Huh? He had his way with all of them, didn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, he certainly... They do that, too, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it was one... I think there was just one them. guy they on, on this night, floor yes. that she was in. It was the dementia, <laughs> the dementia floor. And, uh, and, of course, I always love this one woman who would come up to me every now and then and look at me and go, You a cop? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Yeah. Phil would have felt at home. Yes, Jack. Hey, I was no. talking. Uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a marriage and family counselor recently, mm -hmm. and he said the new hotbed of sex is senior retirement homes. <laughs> and he was not kidding. He was not kidding. Oh yeah. You know. Uh, uh, well, there's said, a difference. There's a difference between senior retirement homes and what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know. yeah, but I mean, you know, he was talking about. You know, people in their seventies like that, yeah. that, that, that the new thing is friends with benefits for people in their seventies. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's weighing the options. I see the gears turning from all the way in New York. You know, I'm it's weighing. I'm only weighing the options the because I'm taking so much medicine for my prostate that there really isn't much. Uh, urge there. All right, we we will have we will have to have a conversation offline, and I will tell you about hydraulics. <laughs> no, no, I have I have no problem with the hydraulics part of it because one of the drugs I'm taking is Cialis, which is supposed to help with the prostate, but it also gives you a boner. But just because you get a boner doesn't mean you've got the same urges you had. I mean, I remember there was a time in my life where I just absolutely fucking had to get laid. You still don't and feel I, that way? I, 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 no, I don't. No. No. And you're dead, brother. No, I've just <laughs> gone on to another existence. You, are, you, are you living on... Look, I want... And, and, and this is no lie. This is no joke. I want uh, to die like my 
mother's brother did when he was 76 years old in a cheap motel with a woman <laughs> that was 30 years younger than him. And when I heard yeah, about last, it... Her last name was Kevorkian. <laughs> yeah. When, when I heard about the it... vice I president. Thought, Remember? Yeah. Uh, when I heard about it, I Postal. thought, you know, my family's full of bullshit in the yard wide. I thought somebody was kidding me because the guy did have a reputation. We said... You know, he doesn't hunt, he doesn't fish, but he does chase. And so, you know, I kind of, you know, laughed it off. And then a few years later, I asked his oldest son, hey, did my uncle really die? He said, yes, at a Motel 6 with a woman who was 35 years younger than him. And he said, daddy sort of went when he came. <clears throat> Right, right. And that's the way I want to go. You know, screw that. You know, I've had tubes running in and out of Well, me. I I have a different theory on that. I don't want to go. Period. That's it. Period. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> well, 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 you're, you're well, born about 50 years too late, Alex, because people born now, there's a chance they could live to be 200. And I wouldn't want that either. <laughs> Well, it depends on what kind of how good what kind of good shape you're in. They'll find so they a way to replace, fuck you over. They can replace fifty years from now. You'll be printing body parts on your home three uh, D printer. Yeah, you're, you're you know. right. Hey, I need a new you're, pancreas. Boom. God, you know, yeah. I saw a thing about uh, you know how you donate organs. Well, it was a New Jersey program with Adubato, and he was talking to a guy, and they want to take it out of motor vehicle because you're only going to get body parts from like the age sixteen and up. Yeah. So now they want to make it so that anyone under 18, somehow they could circumvent the parental laws with children and get like 12 year olds to donate organs. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, it's that bad that they want to harvest, uh, you know, I, maybe the organs are better from a 12 year old or something. I mean, no. I was like, wow. No, I want somebody past puberty and I want them to run a whole new body under me. And this time, give me the John Holmes special model. <laughs> <laughs> In a bad chance, Jack. So Republicans hey. want your liver. Yeah, Jack yeah. once said to me, and I, I, I think I quote you right in Houston, <laughs> Texas. So what happened to all these? Uh, what What is it? We black guys are supposed to have big dicks. What the hell happened to me? Born in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> it's drunk. <laughs> on, you know that, on that note, I am going to go get kid. ready for my own program. Yes, Good he night, does y'all. the intersection I... next over most of this same station. By the way, before you go, did anybody notice I redid the whole website this week? Yes, yes. yes. I, I commented on the position of the live feed. Do you like it where it is now, Phil? I'll check it out. Yeah, uh, I like it better. Yeah, it stands out. Okay, uh -huh. I just wanted to make sure. I put it somewhere. I said, where would Phil have put it? <laughs> put it up his ass. Right. Anyway, anyway it, uh, goodbye, to Jack, uh, goodbye to Jack Bishop. But I, uh, I, 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 said, I said to, uh, I said to uh, myself, uh, where, 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 would, uh, where would he put it? So uh, I, uh, you know. He's like little gazoo over your shoulder. Huh? Remember Kazoo on the Flintstones? Right, it's Kazoo. Pop yeah. It's a feels great like kazoo. kazoo for you. Yeah. So, he pops up. so I, I just, uh, you know, I, I redid the whole the whole page. You like the way it looks? It looks okay, I think. It, I, I brought it, I made it smaller, too. It was too wide. So, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different things I did. It didn't take that long. but uh, uh, I would like to completely redo it, but I've never figured out a way to make it work. Uh, except for the way it's working, because everything you need about us is all there on one page. You know, you don't go to a sub page to get something. You don't have to look somewhere else to find something else out. Everything's there. So I, I kind of like it the way it is. Hey, everybody, it looks like it's time for us to say goodbye. Uh, 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 first of all, let's say goodbye to our good friend Jeff Stein. Phil Meyer, thank you. Kevin, thank you a lot. Tony, thank you. Scott Boddicker, eh, yeah, you're in Iowa. What the hell? Uh, Mike, thank you. Thank you, Charlene, and thank you to Brian. I think it would be nice if you all waved a goodbye to everybody. Okay, that's our citizen panel, folks. That's what they look like. That's what they sound like. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, being here this evening. And uh, Jack and Amy are next with a little program that we like to call, yes, The uh, Intersection. And then after that, at 1 o'clock in the morning, it's Connections right here on GabNet. And 24-7, we run all these programs over and over again, and I hope you'll watch them. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.